A Dallas mother is denying accusations that she tried to sell her baby online. Waco's Mammoth site took a big step toward becoming a national monument last month, getting approval in the House of Representatives, but it may not get such a warm reception in the Senate. Starting with about four minutes left in the game when Baylor had really pulled away, it just turned into a party. Robert Griffin III <laughs> with leading fans in dances. Everyone was on their feet. The band was playing. A U.S. soldier has been arrested, found with explosives in a vehicle. This is raising concerns about another possible attack on Fort Hood. Now, Jordy of Texas high school seniors not college ready. Oh no. There isn't time to be scared. We're so glad that you're waking up with us this morning. If you're standing in front of your closet or your dresser struggling with what to wear today, we're going to make it a little bit easier for you. Put on some red. Yep. There we wow. go. Any wonderful? I'm pulling off the snake. Now, you starting at 830, about 480 households will be without power for up to six hours. Good morning from Denver, where it is unfinished business no more. The Lady Bears taking care of business in a very big way. They are waking up this morning on top of the women's basketball world. This is a one-way ladder. Yes. If I go up this ladder, it means... It's off! Gotcha, come on. Stay straight, stay straight. We'll bring it's it to you. It's a delivery. Yeah. It certainly makes shopping convenient. I guess so. Call them up, say, come on over to my house. The American Red Cross desperately needs more people to roll up their sleeves and donate blood. Texas Today's Rebecca Schleicher joins us live now from the hospital and Rebecca, a tense situation that brought the emergency room yesterday to a standstill. Herman Cain addressed a crowd in Ohio yesterday, the GOP candidate blasting critics for character assassination. Now, a lot of people confuse Cinco de Mayo with Mexican Independence Day, but that isn't the case. It and today, I'm crashing practice. <laughs> Thanks so much for waking up yep. this morning on this snowy, fun I Friday. Hey, Pat Hargis, come here. Pat Hargis works here. Oh, he's <laughs> a direct job. Have a great weekend. Fun. Stay safe and we'll stay warm. And I'm Teal Jennings. Yeah, a big day today for Baylor Athletics. We've got the NBA yep. draft coming up later tonight. So uh, two, possibly three, I think Baylor Bears may be expected to go in that first Very round. Very possibly. And how about everyone know it's not just us that's experiencing this heat wave no. right now. I think across the country, just in the past week alone, 1,000 record highs have been broken. Wow. So everyone's feeling the heat. Thanks to the high pressure, just won't get out of here. All right. Thanks so much, Mary. Well, it is a decision that affects every single person here in the U.S., and that decision will be made in just about four hours. The U.S. Supreme Court is set to rule on whether President Obama's health care law is constitutional, affecting how each and every one of us gets medication and goes to see the doctor. We're taking a live look at the Supreme Court there in Washington, D.C. The high court set to rule on whether President Obama's health care law is constitutional. Now, the court is considering four key questions. Is this mandate constitutional? Can the law survive without it? Is the Medicaid expansion constitutional? And is it too soon to decide this case? Now, it's unlikely, but it is possible that the court could sidestep the whole issue for now. If it decides the penalty for not buying health insurance is really a tax, the court could say that they can't rule on this case till that tax kicks in two years from now. And if we can go ahead and take another live look there at the Supreme Court, I know that people are waiting outside just to be a part of this landmark decision. Oh, There's yeah, about I can see 50 yeah. tickets that will be available that you can actually view the decision as it's happening. So stay with NBC. We will bring you all the details as it unfolds. No doubt that technology is advancing quickly in this day and age, but does technology belong in that classic game, paper, scissors, rock? It's rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Gotcha. Oh, I didn't think you'd go back to it. Gotcha. <laughs> you wouldn't think so, but now we're a couple of days and already a record tying day here in Central Texas. 107 degrees yesterday. That's just that's just not normal. Yeah, we tropical storm Debbie made landfall yesterday. Debbie, of course, is the fourth named storm so far this hurricane ABC, season. D, okay. The last time that we had four named storms this early in hurricane season was 2005, and that, of course, was the Worst hurricane season on record. We had Wilma, Rita that year. Of course, we had Hurricane Katrina yeah. as well. So former Baylor basketball player Richard Hurd remains in FBI custody this morning. He's accused of trying to extort Robert Griffin III. Well, lawmakers have a full plate this week, and some of the issues that they're looking at need to be decided by Saturday before the holiday break begins next week. First, money to create or save 2 million transportation jobs. That runs out at the end of this week if Congress doesn't pass a highway bill 
by Saturday. Department of Defense recognized Gay Pride Month with a ceremony at the Pentagon yesterday. Several hundred service members and civilians packed an auditorium at the Pentagon as the Department of Defense marked Gay Pride Month. President Obama and Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta addressed the large audience by video conference. A new city manager in Colleen this morning. Sort of. The city council officially hired interim city manager Glenn Morrison last night. Colleen's been without a permanent city manager for some time now since the firing of Connie Green last year. Now, Green's contract buyout of $750,000 led to last year's recall, ousting five city council members. Colleen Mayor Dan Corbin says the city can now get on with other matters. Yeah, the rising temperatures we're seeing could create some problems when you're on the road and driving. Extreme temperatures can cause your vehicle to overheat, costing you hundreds or even thousands of dollars in repairs. Experts say constantly monitoring coolant levels and temperature gauges could save your car as well, of course, as your bank account. They say older model cars may be particularly vulnerable to these higher temperatures. And we're not talking about 95 degrees. We're talking about 105 degrees. AAA yep. says scheduling regular maintenance checks are key because the heat can also affect your battery life as well as your tires. Okay, college fans, we've been talking about it for years now, and it looks like finally it's going to happen. Yep, a committee of conference commissioners. And the other question is who makes the decision? What right. kind of committee is going to come up with these four teams. This next story may be in need of career change. It's a job that you wouldn't expect to bring in six figures. It's not a doctor. It's not an engineer that we're talking about. We're talking about a nanny. I am angry. And if you're a Mac user, you should be too. I know where we're going with this. After the break, find out why Teal is so mad. Well, I am angry this morning. I know. Chris Radcliffe. I know you're upset about this. I am very angry. And if you are a Mac user, you should be angry too. Apparently, travel websites like Orbitz have done some research and they have discovered that Mac computer users spend about 30% more on hotel rooms. Okay, well. What they're doing is they're able to tell if you are searching their website from a Mac or from a PC, and they are directing Mac users to more expensive hotels. Wow. Okay. A little Buster Poindexter. Why, Chris? Because it's hot, hot, hot out there. Congratulations to Sean Hobbs. Today's the day, 15th anniversary of the director's chair. The first film he ever reviewed? Face Off. Face Off. John Travolta. Nicholas Cage. Great a movie. good great movie. <laughs> Love it. All right, we'll try Not to stay four stars. <laughs> No, try to stay cool on this Wednesday morning. We'll see you back here on a Thursday. Have a good one. Ted Nugent's been rocking out for more than 40 years. The government can't do anything right. If, as soon as the government touches gold, it turns into a turd. And shocking with his controversial political statements for just about as long. I stand up for the Constitution, the Bill of Rights and freedoms, individual freedoms, and my music is the soundtrack for that. But when he's not touring or making headlines, Ted spends his days here at his Spirit of the Wild Ranch. It's an Obama-free zone. <laughs> So it really is a perfect piece of wild ground. He took me on a tour to see the lay of the land. And I always have gun hunted, but the bow and arrow was so fascinating. The Motor City Madman and his family became adopted Central Texans almost a decade ago. Great hunting, great people, great freedoms, great politics. The Lone Star State was a perfect fit, in part because of the two things the Nuge is best known for, music. Because Texans know music. I mean, they created ZZ Top and Stevie Ray Vaughan, and they've inspired Uncle Ted. And his passion for our Second Amendment right, of which Uncle Ted takes full advantage. Bye bye bad guy. You don't mess with Texas, and you don't mess with me. Exotic hunting in Texas is a year-round hunting operation, and I'm a year-round hunting guy. And now we have uh, unlimited exotics. Great white tails, lots of turkey, small game, waterfowl, wild hogs, and I'm a happy, happy man. Wife Shemaine also makes Ted a happy, happy man. We're almost polar opposites on a lot of things. <laughs> I like to go shopping, he doesn't. She would never I like to touched go to the movies, a, he doesn't. She'd never touched a gun before. Never she touched met me. a gun. She would have never, never killed hunted. her own deer. But after 23 years with Ted, you wouldn't know it. And she's probably the deadliest bow hunter I know. Perfect. When they're not on the ranch shooting, Ted and Jemaine say they're spending their time just like the rest of us in Central Texas. When we go to 1424 
Dan's Uncle Dan's Barbecue, Ninfas. We're at I'm ATB like, every day. So feel free to say hello to your neighbors. Perfect. We love people. We've never met a stranger, only people we haven't met yet. Just don't expect the Nuge to be anyone but himself, politically or musically. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You gotta be a deer hunter to make music like that, baby. <laughs> Teal Jennings, KCEN, HD News. They fly through the air and they make it look so easy. But this could be you. This is Trapeze Austin, the only place in the world where people like you and me can learn the art of trapeze under an actual circus tent. I start with a quick stretching session before getting strapped into the all important harness. Snug is safe, that's what we need to know. You're going to thank us later when you're Yes, swinging. when I'm swinging. <laughs> then we head to the low bar where I get a quick lesson. Does this require a lot of upper body strength? No, it's the momentum. It's the momentum, it. really, okay. It seems easy enough, on the low bar that is. Next, my instructors talk me through what I'll be attempting, and before I know it, I'm climbing. This is a one-way ladder. Yes. If I go up this ladder, it means I have to jump off the platform. Now, I'm a bit of a daredevil. I mean, I soared through the air on the longest zip line in Texas, no problem, and jumped out of an airplane at 13,000 feet. But stepping to the edge of the platform and grabbing that trapeze bar was pretty nerve wracking. My first few tries were exciting, but I was no circus star right away. It took some time to get it all right. After all, trapeze is about timing and listening. Kick forward, backward, forward, let go! Trapeze, good. <laughs> Time for the big finale, the knee hang catch. Again, timing will be key. So when you she far? says ready and have, I have to you go. You have to go. If you don't go or if you hesitate for even a split second, you're not going to meet at the right time. Ah! Hey, straight. Hook your knees quickly. <laughs> Hook them fast. Hands off. Gotcha. Come on. Stay straight. Hey, straight. Uh, stay straight. Tight. Good. straight. Push. 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 Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. So I took on the trapeze, but I don't think I'll be joining the circus. At the Stunt Ranch in Austin, Texas, Teal Jennings, KCEN, HD News. Fashion, it gets its start in places like Paris, New York, Milan, Waco. Yes, Waco. Baylor University is home to one of the top fashion programs in the country. And it's only a matter of time before these students are designing your clothing. Go ahead and smooth it up. Okay. Right here. There's your dart. Okay. Okay. Can you see it? Senior Cassidy Kersey planned on majoring in psychology until she visited Baylor and sat in on a design class. I grew up sketching and drawing clothing, but I didn't think that that could actually be a job. The basics are a must. As a design major, you start out as in like basic sewing classes, and then each semester they progress. Students also spend time in a lab that looks like it could be home to a chemistry class. There they learn to test fabric for things like absorption and strength. But ask about what they're designing, and Baylor's fashionistas really get excited. It's cool to see something that you think of and put on paper actually come into reality and actually be a garment instead of just an idea that you have. With one of only two textile printers in the nation, students even design their own fabric, send a file from the computer to this printer, and with the press of a few buttons, original fabric. And that's not even Baylor's newest gadget. We're very progressive. We constantly review what we are needing to do and want to do to keep our, progr our program in the forefront. This is Baylor's 3D body scanner. Welcome to the most advanced technology in 3D body scanning. Here's the idea. After you've had one of these body scans, you can upload an avatar of your body onto your smartphone. That way when you're shopping, you can scan a price tag and you can see exactly what that piece of clothing will look like on your body. Here goes nothing. The scan begins shining a series of lights on my body. After about 30 seconds, and I'm not so sure I want to look, a completely accurate depiction of my body shows up on the computer screen. So, from the basics to the very high tech, it's no trend. Baylor has fashion covered. Teal Jennings, KCEN, HD News.